Welcome everybody. This is going to be tutorial number two where I'm going to show you how to configure a multi-hop eBGP neighbor adjacency. So for this particular tutorial, we have routers one, two, and three. One is going to be an autonomous system, 65,001. Three is going to be an autonomous system, 65,003. And two is not going to be running BGP at all. Now what's going to make this a multi-hop eBGP neighbor adjacency is the fact that routers 1 and 3 are not directly connected. So they're not going to be in the same subnet. So they're multiple hops away. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to PuTTY and we're going to start with router 1. And one thing you're going to notice is that the configuration is pretty much the same. The first thing we need to do is verify that we have basic IP reachability to the neighbor. Remember, the routers cannot become BGP neighbors if they don't have IP connectivity to each other. And you don't want to be troubleshooting something with BGP or TCP when the neighbor relationship doesn't establish and the main culprit is the routers simply don't have IP connectivity to each other. So here we do a ping to router 3's IP address. We see we get a response back in. So that means that connectivity between router 1 and router 3 is there. Once we verify that basic IP connectivity is there, now we have to enable the BGP process on the router. What this is going to do is tell the router that he's running BGP and what autonomous system number does he belong to. So to do this, we go into global configuration mode. We type router BGP and the autonomous system number. So here we type router BGP 65001 because that's the autonomous system number router 1 is a member of. And you notice now the prompt changes to config-router. This is going to let you know that you're now under the BGP process. Now that we're under the BGP process, it's time to configure our neighbor. Remember, in BGP, the routers are not going to dynamically find themselves. We have to tell router 1 that router 3 is a neighbor. And we do that with our neighbor command. So we say neighbor, we put the IP address of router 3, remote-as, and then we put the autonomous system number 3 as a member of. So our neighbor statement is telling router 1 that router 3 is a neighbor and that he is in autonomous system 65003. So typically, once you configure the neighbor, you would then log into the other router, configure him, and then the neighbor adjacency would come up. But since this is a multi-hop eBGP neighbor configuration, there's one additional command that you have to put, and that's going to be the eBGP multi-hop command. But before we actually do that, I want to explain why this command is needed, and if you don't configure this command, why the neighbor adjacency is not going to form. So BGP has this requirement in place when it comes to configuring or forming an eBGP pairing. It says that the routers that are trying to form the external pairing have to be in the same subnet. So for example, router one, if he was trying to peer with router three, him and router three would have to be in the same subnet. They would have to be directly connected to each other. Now how BGP is going to verify this is when you configure your neighbor statement and you tell the router the IP address of the peer, he's going to look into the routing table and do a connected check just to make sure that you're actually directly connected to the network the peer is on. And if you and the peer are not on the same directly connected network, the BGP neighbor relationship will not form. So by default, you and the peer must be on the same network. Now. The reason why the neighborship is not going to form is for two reasons. Number one, when you first configure the neighbor on the router, typically he's going to send out that first initial TCP send request, letting the other router know that he wants to form a TCP connection. But when BGP discovers that the external peer is not directly connected, that initial TCP send request never gets sent. And number two, even if the peer was to send the router a TCP send request, the router is just going to respond with a TCP reset and refuse the connection. So the problem is this, TCP never establishes, and if TCP doesn't establish, BGP cannot establish. Now to verify this, I right now have a Wireshark capture that is running. So if I pull up Wireshark, and I don't need the update, I just need Wireshark, I'm going to do a filter on TCP and right now we don't see anything so I'm doing a packet capture on the link between 1 and 2 and right now we don't see any type of TCP traffic even though 
we configured router one to peer with router three. Even if three was going to reject it because he doesn't have one configured as a neighbor, you should still see some type of TCP SIM request coming from router one going to router three. But right now we don't see anything. And that's because if we come over to Putty, I'm going to exit out real quick and I'm going to do a show IP BGP neighbor and I'm going to put in the IP address of router 3 if we come all the way down to the bottom it says the external BGP neighbor is not directly connected so this is that connected check that I was mentioning okay router 1 knows that router 3 is not directly connected so those TCP send requests are not being sent so if we want router 1 to then start sending these TCP SIM requests, we have to configure eBGP multi hop on router one to let router one know that router three is multiple hops away and that he's not directly connected. So let's now configure router one to do eBGP multi hop and let's then verify via the Wireshark capture do we see anything that is different. So let's come back to router one. What we're now going to do is configure eBGP multi hop. And when we do this, this is going to let router one know that the peer, who is router three, is not directly connected. Instead, he's actually multiple hops away. So to do this, you go into global configuration mode, you go under the BGP process, and then you apply the eBGP multi hop command to the neighbor. So here we say neighbor, we put the IP address of router three, and we say eBGP multi hop. With this command, router one now knows that the neighbor is not directly connected. Instead, he's going to be multiple hops away. So now that we have eBGP multi hop configured on router one, what I want to do is come back to our Wireshark capture and see do we notice anything different. So now we see a whole bunch of TCP SIM requests that are coming from router one going over to router three. Okay, so this is a SIM request. It's going to the port 179, which is BGP. It's coming from router one going to router three three is responding with a reset so right now three is rejecting the request as they're coming from router one and that's because if we come over to putty and we go to router one or go to router three if we do a show IP BGP neighbors which right now we haven't configured router three yet so what we're gonna do is let's first verify that we can ping router one so his IP address is 192.168.12.1 and we see we get connectivity. We go into global configuration mode. We now enable the BGP process. We're now going to configure router one as a neighbor on router three. So we put the IP address of router one, remote dash AS. Then we specify that router one is a member of autonomous system 65001. Now, if we come back to Wireshark, if we scroll all the way down, we're still getting TCP SIM requests coming from Router 1 going to Router 3, but 3 is still rejecting them. Even though we just configured Router 1 as a neighbor on Router 3. Okay, those SIM requests are still getting rejected. Okay, we can tell because if you look at the port number, the port numbers are different. Right, so this one looked like it was using. 29656. This one is using 52685. Right, so router 3 is still rejecting the TCP SIM request coming from 1. Okay, and that's because if I do a show IP BGP neighbors and I put in the IP address of router 1, if we scroll all the way down, 3 says the external BGP neighbor is not directly connected. So even though at this present moment, one is sending the TCP SIM request to three, three is rejecting them, which means that if you want this pairing to successfully establish, you got to configure eBGP multi hop on both routers, which means I need to come back to router three. I need to go back under the BGP process and I need to apply the eBGP multi hop command to router one. So I just configured router three to let him know that router one is an eBGP multi-hop here. Now, as soon as I do this, 
you see we get a console message saying that the neighbor is now up and we can verify this by doing our show command show IP BGP summary so we see we have the neighbor 192.168.12.1 and if we look in this column right here instead of seeing a state like idle or active we see a number which lets us know how many prefixes we have received from the neighbor if we come over to router 1 and we do the same show command we see we have the neighbor 192.168.23.3 they're up as well Okay, remember your other show command that you can use is show IP BGP neighbors and then you put the IP address of the neighbor and what you're going to be looking for is the BGP state to show established. All right. So this is how you configure a multi-hop eBGP neighbor adjacency. So routers one and three, they're in different autonomous systems. So they're eBGP neighbors. They're just not directly connected. So we come over to router one. If we do a show run section router BGP, so we can see what the actual configuration is. All we did was went under the BGP process as soon as router one comes up. And we said neighbor, we put the IP address of router three, and we said eBGP multi-hop. Now this 255 was here put here by default. So when you do the eBGP multi-hop command, you can specify a maximum hop count, letting the router know what's the maximum number of hops away the neighbor is. Since we didn't specify a hop count, it defaulted to 255. This just lets router 1 know that router 3 can be up to a maximum of 255 hops away. So as long as 3 is not more than 255 hops away, you can establish the pairing. So most of the time, you don't specify a hop count. You just say eBGP multi-hop, and that's it. But you got to have this command right here if you're trying to form an eBGP neighbor relationship and the neighbors are not on the same directly connected subnet. Because remember, default by default, BGP requires that. So if it's a multi-hop pairing, then you got to have this command right here.